Good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining in this Thursday, 7 p.m. class. Um, I thought I would just do it out here this evening in the garden, as it looks so nice. Um, so we're all going to sit on a raise there, whatever you've got, uh, bolsters, uh, cushions, blocks, whatever. And we're going to cross the legs at the shins. Um, and then just feel like we're taking the fleshy bits away out the sides and getting that lift on the chest. Good, so take the fingertips down, bend the elbows and roll the shoulders back and down. And feel like you're moving the sacrum forward. Good, take the fingertips or the hands to the knees, pull on the knees there, and again get that lift from the pubic bone to the navel, and the navel to the chest. Good, and just broaden across the collarbones. Feel that lift on the chest, Towards the, towards the sky, and then you're going to take the arms out wide, open the palms, extend the arms, and then join the palms together. And then just base again the base of the thumb joint, hook the base of the thumb joint into the breastbone, and again just close the eyes. And just observe where we're at this evening. Drawing our awareness inwards. Maintaining that lift and openness on the chest. We're going to take a fuller, deep inhalation through the nose. And then just letting go completely on the exhalation. And again, as we inhale, feel where the breath touches. any thoughts we had before we started our class and we're going to concentrate on the yoga we're about to do. Being grateful and thankful for all that we have. Bow the head down towards the chest, the heart centre, release the hands onto the knees and slowly open up the eyes and just raise up the head. Good. And then extend the legs out long. So the first one we're going to practice today is Barajasana. So we normally do uh, Virasana, which is where we take the heels as wide as uh, wider than the outer hips. But today we're going to just take the big toes together, sit back in between the heels. So it's an easier version. And if you don't like to sit down, if you have an ankle problem or knee problems, remember just to sit on your chair. So we're going to kick the arms wide to the side there. Good. And then join the palms together and turn the little finger side right up the back. I think we have a dog here joining us today, Billy. <laughs> He's eating on his bone. So we're going to broaden across the collarbones. Lengthen the shoulders down towards the elbows. Good. So you want to feel it the, the little finger side is, is nicely moving up. Good. To get the back ribs to move forward and to open up the chest. Shoulder blade is down. Good. And then release the hands down. Good. And then we're going to interlock the hands now. Curve your body and gully asana. So extend the arms long. As you extend the arms long, feel that length again from the tops of the shoulders to the elbows. Tighten up the elbows and go up. So again, go on extending and lift. Shoulders relaxed down. Hope this boy's not annoying you all eating <laughs> on his bone. So go on extending the arms long. Feel the sides of the trunk lengthening. Shoulders down from the ears and squeeze the outer arms up. And then come forward and we're going to change the interlock. So up your right index fingers on top, change to your left index finger. Now extend again. So again, bring the shoulder blades down, extend and go up. And then look up, check if the 
thumb side of the hand extending further. Keeping the front ribs back, abdomen soft, relax the facial muscles and go on lengthen it. <laughs> Feel that opening on the back of the armpit there and then come forward and release. Good. So now we're going to sit uh, again the exact same way as you would do if you're doing Adha Mukha Varasana. And we're going to come forward again. And extend the arms long. Feel like you're rolling the top of the shoulder blades down the back. Good. Keeping that um, long action, we're going to come forward. And then go up. So allow your forehead to come down. Extend the arms right up. If the forehead doesn't come down comfortably, just have a raise for the head there. Pulling the shoulders back, lengthen the sternum chest forward. So go up. So go on, see, can you lift up higher? And then release. And again, change the interlock of the fingers. So left, um, index finger on top, pulling the shoulders back, keep the broadness across the back of the chest as well. So lengthen forward and go up. And if this is not possible, sit on your chair if you feel you can't get down on your ankles or your knees. And then raise the head and come up. Raise the head to chest and we're all back up from that. Good. So the next one we're going to do is Gom Yukonasana. So if you need to sit on a bit of a raise, do so. If not, we're going to sit now and Varasana. Roll the calves nicely out there, or go back to Varasana again. Back to Rasana, where you sit like so. See, these are all going to get at a sit this way. And we'll leave Gom Yukonasana. Not too often we start off sitting down. <laughs> now extend the right arm out long. Um, keep that right shoulder back. Take it down and up the back again. So grab hold of the elbow there and then slide the right hand up the back, keeping that long extension in the top arm, but keeping the right shoulder back. So go on extending and then join the both hands together. Good. And remember, if you don't join easily, you can always use a belt up the back. Good. And then release the hands there, let go of the hands. Now we're going to do the other side, so take the arm back again, turn the palm to face back, but keep this top shoulder back, keep the length, take it as far back as you can, and bring it across. So for us that don't catch easily, we're going to come across holding on to the other arm, then put it right up the back here, maybe give it a bit of a length here, extend the top arm up there, and come down. let go. Look, and then the next one we're going to practice now, sit here again, take the right arm out again long, take it down and up the back there, catch hold, extend the top arm up and the gum you can ask that. This time you're going to extend and lengthen forward. So as you go forward, you want to pull the bottom arm up more and allow the head to go down. Sure, that is good, and then release from that again and change. We'll do the other side. So, then we're going to take the left arm out, take it across. Remember to catch this arm if you're not holding easily, and then extend it up. Reach up, grab hold, and extend and go forward. So, as you go forward again, extend with this right elbow, lengthen more forward. Keep extending well forward. And then just come all the way back up from that. Release, relax the shoulders out. Good. So we're all good. So um, 
Next one then we're going to practice now. We're going to just come up and to stand in the height. We'll do a um, nice quick sun salutation. Uh, to see it's just a lovely evening there. So hopefully the shoulders as well warmed up after all that. So we're going to join the both feet together. Stand in Tadasana. Inhale, raise the arms up. Feel the two sides of the trunk long. Exhale, forward fold. Look forward, keep the hips in line with the heels. From here, bend the knees, either jump the both feet back or take back one leg at a time and then the other. So again, go up into Adamuka Swana. Get the height in the hips there. Forward and two. Erd from Uka Swanasana. Upper dog. So again, extend the arms long. Chest lifting, work the inner legs. Good. We're going to go for Chaturanga Dandasana. <laughs> so bend the elbows towards the waist and go down. Good. And then fir firmness in the both arms. Erd from Uka Swanasana. Drop the shoulders down from the ears and add them in. Get that tight in the hips there. One, get the two sides low. And then from here you can either jump in or step the right leg forward and just do a nice big deep lunge. Take the left leg back and do a deep lunge. Raise the left arm. Keep the head in line with the big toe here and extend the top arm. Good. Come down and raise up the right arm. So your knee likes to roll out there. Breathe into that stretch. Keep lifting and extending and come all the way down. And then from here, reach up. Look up. Lift up out of the, the waist there. Trunk is tall. Come down, join the both feet. And again, Uttanasana. And then forward, Urdva Hastasana. Shoulders working and join the palms together. And back to Tadasana. So we'll do one, one more on the other side. Inhale, raise the arms up. This time we'll do quicker. Exhale, forward fold. From here, go down and jump the legs back. Or take back one at a time. And then, then we're going to come forward and to Urdvamukha. Good. Upward dog. Chaturanga. Bend the elbows towards the waist. Back into Urdvamukha. Swanasana. And then back into Adam. So get the breath back here. Then from there we're going to step the left leg forward and just do a deep lunge. Right arm up. Breathe into that stretch. And here lift higher. And then come down and raise the left arm. Good. Keep the knee in and line with the outer left hip there. Down and reach up. Chest lift. And then come down. Join the both feet together. Be in Yutanasana again. Rusted, don't come down easy. Remember, come halfway and lengthen the front body. And then with strong legs, come up. And hands to the chest. And extend the arms down now. Good. So we're all. Back from that. So we're all going to get ready now to do uh, back into standing and tadasana. And we're going to join the both feet together, line the big toes up with the inner heels, and we're going to do yutkatasana. So again, raise the arms up, shift the weight back to the heels, and sit down in our seat. Tailbone up. Arms lifting higher, chest lifting, and then come all the way back up and take down the arms. So we'll do one more, sideways on, this time. And join the legs together, inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, sit down in our seat. Shift the weight back. Try to not let the tailbone stick out there. You've got to lift from the base of the abdomen. Strong action in the legs. Arms lifting higher. And then come all the way back up. And just take down the Good, and back. So we're going to do, you take a 
Hakanasana. So raise the arms now, bend the knees and lightly jump. And again, just observe what's happening uh, on the both legs. Do you want to make sure you shift the weight back there? Lift the inner arches, inner knees, hitting out, and inner groins hitting out. Feel that spread from the middle. Turn the whole of the right leg out. So spin the right leg out, firmness on the back leg, extend and come down. Good. And then draw that outer right hip buttock deep in. Extend the top arm. Breathe into that stretch. Turn to look up at the lifted hip. And here, come up. Turn the right foot in. And we'll do the other side. So turn the right foot in. Observe that we're equal distance from the front of the mat. And then turn the whole of the left leg out. So again, spin the whole of the left leg. Pressurize your right foot firmly down. And heel. And as we exit, extend the left. Good. Take the head back. Good. Keep that thin in action on the outer hips there. Turn to look up the lifted hand. And here, come up. Turn the feet to face front. And jump or step the feet together. Back to Tadasana. Right, so the next one we're going to practice now is Virabhadrasana 2. And then you take the Paris back and after from there. So raise the arms, bend the knees, and big wide stride. Shift the weight back more onto the heels. Turn the left foot slightly and hold of the right leg out. And as you turn the right leg out, feel that you're, you're um, making sure that that knee and big toe is facing um, in the same direction. Inhale now, bend your right leg till a good right angle. And then lift from the base of the abdomen up. Keep working the back leg. Lengthen through the fingertips and then go on extending down. And here we're going to have a brick at the inside of our right heel. You notice here? So you're going to keep that brick at the inside of your right heel or boot, whatever we've got there. Keep firmness on the back leg. Feel that you're drawing this outer right buttock deep in and take the left shoulder back. Head back and then extend the top. Firmness on the back. So feel the inner heel touch the breath. Take the head back, shoulders back more. Then we use the top arm to come up. And turn the right foot in and we'll go to the other side. So just have the breath now here to your inside of your left foot. As you turn the whole of the left leg out, keep the pressurizing that right foot firmly down and just check our alignment there as heel and line within step of the foot. Pull up the knees and the thighs and heel. And as we exhale, we're going to bend our front leg. Keep the chest lifted. So again, rotate the whole of that left knee out and then feel that you're drawing that left buttock deep into the body. Chest is open. And stay there. Be in the present moment. And enjoy there. Good. Now extend the left arm right out down towards the brick. And again, take the top hand to the waist. And then make sure you get a good right angle with the front leg. And take that right shoulder back. Head back. Feel your inner ankle or inner um, heel touch the brick there. And then extend the top arm. So soften the top ribs more. Look up, head up. Chest lift into the sky. And here to come up. Turn the feet to face front. And jump or step the feet together. So we're going to do Uttanasana next. So again, see for us that uh, do not go forward into half Uttanasana. This is the one we'll practice. So like Alicia there, we've had a few inquiries, messages telling me how if you don't get the concave in the back or you're not getting right down say we're like so we're going to use a chair or a wall and you're going to be here like so so you want to keep the ribs moving in move the breastbone forward 
and do the hack. Then for us to go easily down, it's fine to be here as long as you can still lengthen through the front one. You want to put the bones left in front. And then the hands go here, head there. But for us to still and the half get the last one there, try to get this extension or in the front. Good. So hopefully should that will help help you with that one. Next one we're going to practice now, we're going to do very vidrashna of what? So we're all here on the middle of the mat there. Again, raise the arms up, bend the knees and jump. I think the dog's having a drink of my water there now. It's the end of that. <laughs> so pull again, pull the legs is, is really working there. We're going to turn now the whole of the left foot well in and spin the whole of the right leg out. And then glance down, have you got heel and line with instep? So take the hands to the waist here for a moment, turn the hips well round, keep that back leg working really strong, and reach up. Inhale, like keep the back leg strong, we're going to bend till the right angle with the front leg. So lift the, the whole of the, the abdomen, chest away, rubs away from the lower abdomen there, and reach up, look up. Pull the right outer hip back. Good, and then up, and take the hands to the waist. So we're going to do the other side. Turn the whole of the left foot now well in. Turn the trunk to face front, or the right leg as you see in, and turn the whole of the left leg out. And then revolve and turn. So keep that broadness here from the base of the buttock, working from the, the midline out. And then extend the arms up and here, and this way exhale we're going to bend. Pull the left foot back, go down and make a good right angle. Here go then. Good, go down and here up. Turn the feet right and jump or step the feet together. Perfect, so go back to Tadasana again and we're extending the arms down low. So we're all, um, we're if you're outside in the garden, I'm sure there's no walls close by. So we're going to do a, a slight bit of Ard for Pajarita Ek Tadasana. So we're going to do it again, um, like so. Stand and Tadasana, extend the arms up. Lengthen and go forward. So as I was showing earlier with the chair, for us that don't go forward easily, or feel that you're losing it, you can use a bit of height under the hands, like so. So if you feel that you're rounding your front body, be here. For us that goes down easily, it's fine. You can take the hands to the mat. So again, we're going to keep that grip and action in the outer hips, keeping the firmness here. So you're going to lengthen the front body, keep the left foot where it is, and take the right foot back. And as you take the right foot back, make this left thigh hip back, walk the hands in, and raise the right leg up. So extend the right leg. Lengthen from the inner groin to the inner heel. Keep firmness on the both legs. Good. Go on extending. And then come down. And be here. And then we'll do the other side. How was that, everyone? Good. So again, extend the arms. Lengthen through the front body. Use your height if you need to have height. From here, then, you're going to take this uh, left foot back. Keep the little toe side of the foot down and lift this right hip higher as you raise your left leg. So again, lift the leg up, extend from the inner groin to the inner heel. So if you want to go down, do so. For us that don't go down easily, just get used to lifting the leg up. And then come down and come all the way back up. Good. And we're back from that. So we're all going to come ready now to come down to our mat. Down to the mat there, and we're going to sit first of all, we're going to do Supta Padangustasana 1 and 2. So, we're here. 1 and 2. So, as we lie down, 
again. You go to bend this. So feel your own tadasana on your mat there. Bend the right knee into the chest and draw the right knee in. And as you draw the right knee in, extend the left leg away. Shoulders relax down and change. We'll do the other one now. Draw the left knee in. Good. If you need height for the head, use it. Extend this right leg further and release. The next one we're going to practice now, we're going to hook the belt just around the right foot. So draw the knee in, reach for the belt. Don't let the shoulders come up around the ears. Drop the shoulders down. And then you want to push that right thigh and the front of the thigh to the back thighs and the both legs and hold up somewhere here. Just go on extending your left leg away as you raise the right leg. You're all okay there. Take the thumb on here to the outer right hip and make that outer right thigh hip back. And then, and then we're going to climb up the belt and come up. So again, don't bend the knees there. Lift them. Get the chest lifting higher. Keep that bottom leg long and come all the way down. Now get the two ends of the belt into the right hand and take the leg across the body. Come up and over. Good. Extend from the inner groin to that inner heel. And then draw back from the little toe side of the foot back towards your outer right hip. Then come all the way back to center and release the leg. Right, so we'll do the other side now. So again, we're going to bend up the left leg, bend the knee onto the chest, raise the left leg up, make that right side go down and the left side up back. Front of the thighs to the back of the thighs. better now and then you're going to climb up the belt again everyone and come up so try to get the upper back to lift up more off the, the mat go and lift up high widen out the elbows good make the legs work strong and come down now take the two ends of the belt into your left hand and then take the leg across and as you take the leg across, extend from the inner groin to the inner heel. Keep that right thigh moving down and lift up. Good. All the way across. Keep the abdomen coming to And come back to center. Back. Go. Back. And then we're all back out of that. So we're all going to get ready next of all now to lie on our um, back. And we'll do Earth of Kajarita uh, Padmasana. So extend the legs up at 90 degrees. Back to the knees is up. Keeping the abdomen uh, soft there. Extend the arms over the head. Feel that stretch in the inner legs. Inhale. And as we exhale now, we're going to go to 60 and hold. Inhale. And you're going to go to 30 and hold. And here, and then you're going to go all the way down to the mat. Using our core muscles there, and we're back out of that. So the next one, we're going to use a belt for this one. Lie down. Pick back up the legs again. So if you felt that that was too much on your back there, you can hold your uh, belt and keep the legs at 90. Make sure that the backs of the knees are open. Get that firmness in the outer hips as well. So inhale, and as you let go of the belt, feel that your legs are still at 90. See if they're not there, stay with the belt. So inhale, go to 60 and hold. Draw the abdomen strongly back. Go to 30. Good. And all the way down. There. 
good, bend the knees onto the chair and sit up. So we're going to do per, uh, Navasana. Um, we're going to sit on our mat there, take the fleshy bits out to the sides, roll the shoulders back and down and keep the chest well lifted. Extend from the inner groins to the inner hips. Good. So feeling that the sacrum's moving forward. And then you're going to lean back and raise the legs up. Chest lifted and extend the arms out long. Keeping the chest well lifted. Good. And release them. Come down. So for us that cannot do that easily, we're going to bend the knees. Draw the abdomen back, relax the shoulders down and keeping the feet off the floor. And then you would just hold the back of the legs. Like the front of the thighs, hip to the back of the thighs. Keep the chest lifted. And see then, can you take the arms out? Good. Well done everyone. And release from that. And then just relax the legs out. Keep the chest open. So we're going to come around now and to add a Mukha Barasana. Uh, we're going to sit well back on the heels there. Lengthen the whole front body forward and extend the arms out long. And just allow the head to go down. Just allow the head to go down. Spread the hands out wide. Come up onto the knees, come right up onto the knees, make sure the hands are spread and you're going to tuck the toes in and we're going to go up. So up onto the ball pad of the foot there, see can you get the sit bones lifting higher. Good, the arms is long, feel the, the arms move into the shoulder sockets and then make the legs hit strongly back. Strongly back there, front of the ankles, back towards the heel. Chin away from the chest. Open that chest towards the front of the thighs. And bend the knees and come down. Good. So we're all just going to grab um, the brick. And we're going to lie out long on our mat there. As we lie out long on the mat now, just put the brick in front here and extend the both legs long. So if you don't have a brick, you can always use a, uh, a book or whatever you've got there. So extend the legs away. You need to get to this length here at the very top of the thighs, keeping that long out. Now we're going to grab hold of the, the, the brick inside the hands and extend and lengthen the, the arms forward. Head down. So keep the arms long and then bend the elbows. Try to walk the elbows more forward. Probably show us from front here now. Um, so you're trying to get the whole of the armpits to go down and to the mat. And then press on the, the brick. Keep pressing on the brick. Feel how you want to move the dorsal area deep in down to the mat. Good. How does that feel everyone? Nice work on the shoulders there. And then release. Good. So again, we're going to practice from here. You're going to have the hands on the bricks here. So you could do this action with our bricks here. Um, lift up. Get good height on the hips there. And move again the dorsal deep in. And then look forward, bend the elbows, and push the shoulders back. Keep pressing on that brick. Get the hips lifting higher, and move the shoulders back. And then just allow the head to go down. Let the head go down. If your head doesn't go to the mat, don't worry. And then release back from that. Brilliant. Well done. And we're back. We're all going to get ready now to sit again and cross legs. So we're going to take our um, support. A 
if you have a blanket, cushion there, whatever you've got, just sit on the, a bit of a race. And then we're going to cross the legs. See that you're crossing at the shins there. Make sure you have the fleshy bits really well out to the side and take the fingertips down. So even catching your knees, can you lift the top chest higher? You want to move again, the sacrum forward. You raise the arms up, extend the two sides of the trunk long. Inhale, exhale, turn to the right. bottom ribs getting the, the turn, the waist area, further round and come back to centre. Good. And now raise the arms up, lift up out of the lower trunk of the abdomen there. Inhale, exhale, turn to the left. Inhale and we're going to go further round there and just hold the left knee with the right hand. Use your left hand behind to stay tall. Sit tall and turn. Look up. In here, so it's more about keeping the chest lifted and then revolving to further. Good, and come back to center. So we're going to change the cross of the legs. And again, feel that you cross that you're crossing more at the shins. Then turn to your, um, I'm going to turn to my right. So raise your left arm up. And as you extend, you're going to extend over your right knee. And then use this right hand here to try to turn the left side of your trunk more to the mat. Go forward. Keep pinning this left hip down and turn. Further round. Abdomen soft and come back to center. Good. Change, we'll do the other side. Now turn to the left, raise the right arm up, and heel, and as you exhale, go towards your left knee. So you're turning in the direction of your left knee, and then use the left hand to help us to turn the right ribs more to the, the mat. And heel, and as you exhale, you're going to go further. So wherever you can go, don't be allowing the head to go down right away. Try to lengthen the front back. Turn further round and come back to centre. Well done everyone. And now relax or just release the legs out. Next one we're going to do is Supta Baddha Konasana. Supta Baddha Konasana, so you're going to lie down on our mats here. You're going to catch hold of your both ankles. Join your feet together. Catch hold of the ankles. So you might need to come right up onto the top of the shoulders there. And then press the feet together. And just be there. Allow yourself then to go down. So you should feel the top of the shoulders move back, chest lifting and pressing the heel. For us that don't go down easily or can't get our feet there, we can always use a belt. So you would catch the belt around the both feet, pulling the feet back more. Good. Lovely. So we're all going to do practice set you back. This one. So if you all have a brick or something here, just grab hold of a brick. Well done everyone. And then we're going to come right on till our front now. And I want us all to practice Chaturanga Dandasana. So we're going to take the hands, extend the legs out long. Extend both legs well back. Feel that you're extending from the inner groin to the inner heel. And then tuck the toes in and stretch. Make sure all toes is touching the floor. And then extend the both legs back. 
So notice how my kneecaps is lifting, the thighs is lifting off the mat there, and you want to press the pubic bone down. And as you press the pubic bone down, feel this grip on your outer hips. You all feel that grip there as the knees and thighs is lifted. Good. Go on, extend the inner heels back, outer heels back. Don't let the, the legs roll in, roll them out. Roll the inner heel to the outer heel. And then take the hands here underneath the shoulders. Good. Inhale. And as we exhale, come up. Good. Extend the heels back and come down. So for us to do not come up easily, we're going to use some height. So you have the hands on top of the bricks. And if we're using the bricks there, we want to get the shoulders lifted. So tuck the toes in, lift the knees and thighs up and here. And as we exhale, come up. And go down. Good. Much easier. <laughs> right, one more. Kneecaps lifted. Lengthen the front of the thighs. Inhale. And on the exhale again, go up. Lovely. And go down. Well done, everyone. Now we're going to take the... Again. Take the arms back long. Extend the legs away. Take the arms back long. And allow the head to drop. And we'll do Salabhasana, so inhale, and on the exhale, come up. Extend the arms back. Chest lifting, legs, front of the thighs long, and go down. One more, inhale. Feel that length in the front thighs. And go up. Reach, lengthen away. And all the way down. So we're going to practice now Eustrasana. So for us I'd like to use a bit of height on top of the heels there, like a bolster, do so. Uh, if not, we're not going to worry about going down to touch heels. It's all about getting that upward lift the end hall. So we're going to sit again in between the both feet. And notice again that all the toes need to be touching the mat. Then we're going to kneel up, take the hands to the backs of the, of the buttocks, or the back of the hips here, the waist, and then keep this tall length on our front body. So you want your chest to be lifted. Now take the hands down to the very, to the, the base of the buttocks there. Go on lifting the chest up more. Let the head just curve naturally and go on lifting. Slide the hands down more and go on lifting. And then slowly come up. This is how we're going to practice. So if you can touch down, eventually do so. If not, it's not to be all that you touch your heels. You actually want to get more length on our front body than touching down to the heels. You want to keep the lumbar long. So hands on the waist again. Roll the shoulders back, but keep broadness across the collarbone. At the front chest, back chest, slide the hands down. Go on, slide. Chest lift. And then keep the hands to the heels. Broaden. Keeping the chest lifting higher. And then slowly come up. And sit down in between the both feet. Good. So remember for us that need to go higher, sit higher. Remember you can always use a chair as well for this, which is nice. If we're not just at that stage where you can get right down yet. So you would be here. And again, making sure the feet that all ten toes is firmly down. You want to press your shins, anchor your shins down. Take the hands here again and do the curve. You want to get that chest lifting to the, the sky and then you come down like so you see broad here and then come all the way back so whenever you're ready you can slide further down to the heels so when we do one more attempt there 
Zo een heerlijk hier. Recover, are we all oké? Okay? Hands to the waist there again. So pressing the shins down. Again, slide the hands down. Get the tailbone to move deep in. Lift the front back. Good. Slide the hands down the back of the legs and hold the feet. Chest open. Or remember, touch the legs. And then come up and sit back down into Varasana. Good. And recover. So it's nice to do it in stages so we're not all there yet. Um, just take our time and gradually um, try to lengthen the front body. Another way of practicing is facing the wall and you know staying having this part close to the wall. Good, so we're going to come out again at that, come around into Adamuka for Asana here and then come into Adamuka Swanasana. Keep in the lift. Spread the hands wide, come the hands in and go. away from the chest there. Make the front of the thighs, tuck to the back of the thighs, elongate the arms and the legs. Don't bring the chin tight to the chest, let the chin move away and try to bring the chest closer to the front of the thighs. Work the legs strongly back and then we're going to bend the knees and come down. Good, lovely, and we're all coming back out of that. So we're going to sit again like we started off in Vajrasana, where you would have the big toes touching, your heels is here, again, and we're going to stay here. So we're going to interlock the hands now, extend forward and come up. And notice how easy it is to come up at this stage. You're going to bring the elbows back and lengthen the sides of the throat. Good. See, can you take the arms back behind the ears? Allow the waist to stay back. Relax the facial muscles. And release. So we're going to change the interlock. So again, extend and lengthen. And come up. Go on, lift them higher. Squeeze the outer arms in. And the inner arms need to go up more. Shoulders down. Create space and length in the neck. And then re relax out. Come down. Well done, everybody. So we're all going to get ready now to lie down on our mat for relaxation. You can either lie down on um, on your tummy and prone Sabasana. I'll show you this one. When you would lie down, you would have your big toes touching and the heels rolled out. And as the heels roll out, you want to get the top here, the base of the buttocks to roll away from the midline. So no clenching in the buttocks there or the lower back. Mm -hmm. So this is one version here, like so. You can have the arms like that. And you're just allowing your body um, to let go towards Mother Earth. So a lovely way to practice as well if you want to do that. Um, we don't normally do it. Um, if you have neck issues or that, you might need some kind of a blanket more for the head there. So rather like so. Making sure you spread the back uh, of the sacrum. For us that do not like lying like so, remember you can have your legs on the chair, which is love as well, or you can lie on your back. So as you lie on your back again, notice as you look down your legs that your feet roll out, just to the sides. And you want to lengthen the legs long, roll the shoulder blades deep in and allow the palms to be upwards. Chest is open. So again, another nice version of lying there, whichever way you want. So we're all good to get ready. So whenever we are there, we're going to get comfortable. You can lie in Vaparidi Karani as well if you're inside, legs up the wall. Um, a bit of support just for the back of the neck there, and we're good to go. So as you lie down again, just allow the body to let go and release completely.
eyes is closest to the brain. So allow the gaze of the eyes to move back and down towards the heart center. Allowing the heart to be open to receive. Then your ears store all that information. So you're allowing the eyes or the ears now to just shut down completely. Signs up close there, so the, eye, or the eyes and the ears are completely letting go and relaxing. And then allow the brain to become quiet. Allow the brain to be to come into hibernation. It doesn't need to learn anymore. It's just off again, just having a rest. So lie there, letting go completely and relaxing, observe the mouth. Allow your jawbone to slightly open. Observing our existence. How do you feel? Letting go of any expectations that we might have or any worries or fears. Allow the throat to be soft. The sides of the neck is soft. Feeling that warmth going all the way out from the shoulders down the arms, keeping the fingers just naturally curled. Allowing both hips to drop heavily down into the mat. taking our after the exhalation we're going to take a fuller deep inhalation through the nose and as you let go let go loosely and completely cleanse in the mind and cleanse in the body any anxious thoughts that we might have. And just let them go. And we're just going to stay with the breath. Observing where we are, where we're at right now. Imagine the feel and the spirit family, friends, grateful for our health, and all the things that we just take for granted. We have abundance, and we're grateful for all that we have. We'll take a, another fuller deep inhalation through the nose. Breathing in peace and calm into the mind and the body. And 
and an exhalation, letting go physically and mentally on the out. Holding on, we're choosing to let go. Slow, soft, deep inhalation, followed by a slow, soft exhalation. And again, just observing where the breath is. aware of that gap between the inhalation and the exhalation. I want to thank you all so much for joining in this evening and I hope you're all lying out there in a warm garden enjoying the sunshine and your yoga. So stay for as long as you wish. Namaste.